What's up? This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com. And in this video, we're going to talk about a young lady. It says that I didn't live at an address. They sent the summons, didn't show up to court. There was a default judgment and didn't know until the cops came knocking at the door saying that there was a warrant for my arrest. We're going to talk about uh, what I would do in that situation. Uh, to uh, uh, if that was something that happened to me um, and the options that are available. Uh, before I get started, I want to say uh, watch out for people who are responding. They are not me. They come up with these slick ways of making uh, U.S. subscribers and viewers think that you're respond that I'm responding to you. It's not me. You'll know that I'm responding to you by having a uh, black box around the credit repair shop name and then you'll see my picture not blurry uh, but uh, watch out for that and we do not have you responding to gmails and all that type of stuff you can go to my website the credit repair shop .com, and there's a chat box you can leave messages uh, and then you can also email or go to our contact form on our website and uh, we will not be used we don't use gmails and all that stuff so um, you know, th this this is why another reason why uh, my experience the and some people say, man, you seem very real because this is something that actually happened to me. And I'm gonna start over by reading it. it said I did not live at the address they sent the summons to, didn't show up, and there was a default judgment. Didn't know until the cops came knocking at the door saying that there was a warrant for my arrest for the people who think that you that they cannot put a warrant for your arrest this individual is saying that they did have a warrant for their uh, her arrest and what they do is they it's it's like a it's a bench warrant just to have you come in and where you attest to what you're going to you know how you're going to pay this judgment uh and they said what can they do and they also said uh also mentioned that they live out of state so uh this is something that happened to me so i have the feeling like you know when people say do you know you know what i'm talking about and do you feel what i'm talking about this is one of those situations where i know what you're talking about i can i'm going to tell you some options but i also feel what you're going through because i had the same Thing happened to me and hopefully the amount that uh, you have it going for you is not the amount that happened to me which was over one hundred thousand uh, dollars on a foreign judgment when they say foreign that means from one state to another state and they do this because they don't want people to get notified and uh, so they're able to fight uh, against them so now let me tell you what you need to do on uh, something like this or let me tell you what the options on what happened and what i learned from going through my process is the uh first thing is that you should notify the court in that area and you got to do this quick you cannot take your time on this uh because this was that was one mistake that i made you notify the court in that area that you do not reside in that jurisdiction. If you notice on the court summons, it'll say that you reside in that jurisdiction. That is a requirement for them to do that. For any debt collector that's trying to sue you, they can't try to sue you in their state and you live in another state. They cannot make it a burden for you to go and fight for your, uh, you know, fight the court summons. So that's the first thing, but you got to do that before a certain period of time. And then, um, that one thing can get the whole thing thrown out to where they have to refile everything in the state that you live in. Uh, now, the other thing that you need to do is you need to uh, answer the uh, the, uh, uh, the the court summons or answer to the debt to the debt. You need to notify the debt collector. You can do this by phone. You can do this uh, by sending a letter to the court. Uh, that they sent it to in your area so you can get that warrant taken off because basically all that warrant is the, is is out there for is to get you to answer to what you're going to do if you don't got the money 
Uh, that's an answer. I don't have the money to pay the debt. If you are going to end up paying the debt, you believe that it is yours, everything checked out, it's just you were going through hard times at that time and you're, you want to uh, take care of it, you can let them know that you're going to take care of it. You can tell them how you're going to take care of it. This That's the only reason why they have that uh, warrant out there. I do want you to give me more information about what happened when the cops came to the door. What happened? What did they say? Did they just serve you again with the new one and state that there will be a warrant? Or did they take you in? Or did they allow you to answer? It's different in every state. I would like to know the uh, uh, what, what ended up happening with that. Uh, but so to review, the first thing that I would do is you, because if it's something that's fresh, uh, haven't went past the uh, the uh, statute for reopening a judgment, which is usually uh, six months in most states, write that judge and let them know that you did not reside in that state and that you did not receive the document and that you want them to reopen the case and make them have to serve you in your new residential area because you're in a different state that they need to re close that out, reopen it because that you do have a right to be served and have your case heard in the county that you reside in. That would be step number one that you need to do. And then once you get them to do that, you're going to have to answer, you know, they're going to start everything over. You get that court summons and you need to do your answers. Also, you should see if you can notify the judge that has gotten a foreign judgment uh, documentation that you can get that information to them too to see if they will send it back to the state and have that type of process working. Uh, it's going to be different in every state. Uh, it's going to be different with some judges see it one way, some judges see it another way. But you, that would be the first steps that I would make to start getting that worked on because in my situation if i would have just did that in the right period of time they would have made them close that out this you know uh, dismiss that case and bring that case in my jurisdiction which was over uh two thousand something miles away i had never lived in the state that they had actually filed that in uh so i hope that that helped you i wish you luck and also please uh uh, post a comment with an update so we can know, uh, so I can help you with some other steps that you might need to make. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different. Watch my eight-point validation process, my two-phase settlement process. That is the way that we repair credit. If you need your credit reports and scores, go to the website, and the link is below this video, www.your3scores.com. Number three, the number three Get those credit reports. You're going to need those to start working on your credit. If you need the cease and desist collection activities letter, statute of limitations letter, or my debt validation letter, those letters are for free. Link is below this video. I give you all three at the same time, and you can use the one that you need for your specific uh, situation. Please subscribe to the channel. Please post your comments. Please like this video. Thank you for your time. This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of the CreditRepairShop.com.